Thank you, Catherine. Good morning and welcome, brothers and sisters, as we gather on an exquisite Vermont spring day. I am so glad you could all come outside for it, you who are here in person, and for those of you who are watching at home via live stream, welcome, and I hope you are somewhere comfortable uh, having breakfast or still in bed or in your PJs having a coffee, and we're all jealous, uh, except that we get to be out here. Uh, I just got a reminder on my Facebook, uh, a piece I wrote uh, five years ago today and saying that it was snowing from a leaden sky uh, on this date in 2016. So we have a decidedly happier day today to gather in worship outdoors. Today is Ascension Sunday, and it's a Sunday that Protestants have been having a hard time with for, for a, a long time. Uh, it is the time where Jesus both says goodbye, the risen Jesus says goodbye to his disciples and gives a promise of the coming spirit to be with them. And next week we will celebrate the coming of that spirit on Pentecost Sunday. So I invite you to come and uh, we'll wrestle with this text a little bit with us from the first chapter of the book of Acts as we get uh, Luke's take on this ascension Sunday. But first, we are going to celebrate that we can be outside and singing for only the second time in a year. So, and we uh, will be doing our first hymn called Christ is Alive. It's an Ascension Sunday hymn with some important theology about it. So pay attention to the lyrics. On, it's number 318 in your hymnal. And it will be on the screen for those of you watching at home. And Dana will lead us in this song. I invite you all to join with me in the call to worship by Ruth Burgess. If you could read the bold type. Lighter of lights. Illumine us. Fire of fires. 
saw us. Power of powers. Strengthen us. Lover of lovers. Warm us. Teller of tales. Encourage us. Destroyer of darkness. Save us. Touchstone of truth. Examine us. Summoner of stars. Amaze us. Wellspring of wisdom. Weather us. Water of life. Refresh us. Dancer of days. Delight in us. Breath of the universe. Bless, Bless us, us as, as we, we gather, gather to, to worship. worship. Amen. Our next hymn is a piece of Americana. Uh, o Living God, it's sung to the tune of Shenandoah, and it's on 3089 in the green hymnal, Worship and Song. Thank you, Dana. Thank you, Catherine. Hey, how would some sturgeon kids like to come on up front and watch me be a very poor substitute for your mom's uh, young people's message? Oh. Good to see you guys. Oh. Good to see you. Oh, man. Getting on the ground when you're 59 is getting to be harder and harder. It's so good to see you outside. Howdy. Oh, this is so great. So, um, you guys have grown up in Vermont. Mm -hmm. Have you had many opportunities to be in an elevator? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes? Where? In Myrtle Beach. In Myrtle Beach. You get to try an elevator out in Myrtle Beach, so you have to go 1,800 miles away <laughs> to, uh, to, to try an elevator out. We've got an elevator sometimes here. Yeah. There, uh, there are and, some in the school. And the school has an elevator? Yeah. All right. We have something in here that isn't legally an elevator. Because if I call in an elevator, I, I can probably be, be sued by somebody. I'm not sure. But it's a, what's, what's the proper term? A lift. It's a lift. A lift. Um, when we lived in Montpelier, there was, there was one elevator in town. Uh, and so I actually would bring the kids down to try it out because it was, like, so cool. Because we'd lived in the Adirondacks where there are no elevators in six million acres and no elevators at all. So, Elevators aren't that cool. Well, you know where they were really cool was when I was a little older than you and we lived in Illinois and we would go to Chicago and we would take the elevator in the Sears Tower, which is now called the Williams Tower? Willis, Willis Tower. The Big, Willie. the Big Willie, they call it now. <laughs> I'm still calling it the Sears Tower because <laughs> I'm G-rated. But um, that elevator was so fast 
and went so high, it would just <laughs> head up, and this, the, the, the numbers were like, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Your ears would pop. They were going so fast, your ears would pop. And it was the cool. And you get up, and you could see all the way to Michigan, to the east, and Indiana, to the south, and Wisconsin, to the north. I know, it was amazing. Uh, our reading from the gospel today that we're going to hear in just a minute, it's called Ascension Sunday. And I'll be honest with you, it's a, it's a reading I've always had a little bit of a hard time with. Uh, I, I think because... I'm, I, 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 used, I used to study engineering when I was an undergraduate. I was an aerospace engineer. And in this story, Jesus is lifted up and disappears into the sky. And a per, as a person who studies astronomy a little bit, I come to going, where is he going? Back in the old days, they felt that heaven was up. So if Jesus is returning to God, it meant going up. But nowadays, we know that up is just out out there. Someone calculated that if Jesus headed up and started going the speed of light, he'd only be 10% of the way across the galaxy right now. So, so we, we can't really read it as, as Jesus actually headed up forever, but it's, it's a metaphor. Are we ready for a metaphor? We did metaphor last week. We'll do metaphor again. That Jesus returning to God, not necessarily up, but Jesus going to be fully with God again. And the important thing was how his disciples felt. Not that he went on an elevator trip, but that they were left alone. And that's an important thing because the disciples felt alone and were kind of kind of sad. They were very sad. And Jesus gave them a promise. It's like, I'm leaving you, but you guys are going to get something amazing called the Holy Spirit that is going to teach you and empower you to become church, teach you and empower you to love and to share and to be the best people in my name as Christians. So it's pretty cool stuff. So when we hear the story, it's going to sound like an elevator. Don't get stuck there. Think about how the disciples felt and what they get called to, all right? So when we get to that part of the story in a few minutes, you'll be there. And now the adult, this is really for the adults because they get stuck there even worse. So just telling you. So thank you guys. And um, we will uh, talk soon. You can get back to your folks or there in the shade. And we are going to have an opening to God time written by Steve Garnis Holmes from our reading from Acts and from Ephesians. Those readings are in your bulletin. But I invite you to be fully here. Take a deep breath in as though it's the very presence of that promised Holy Spirit. And breathe out all that blocks us from opening to God's love. Breathe in presence. Breathe out distraction. Breathe in God's heart, God's love, God's breath. Breathe out all that keeps you from connecting. And hear these words of prayer. Christ, risen and ascended, you are no longer one person, but the whole. Christ, you are raised bodily, and your body now is us and all creation. Loving one, may we live this day as your body, your flesh and blood, as the only purpose of each of our hands is to be 
our hands to move as each of us will, so may our purpose today to be, to be your hand, your eyes, to touch and to bless, to create and to heal as you will. As your spirit moves us, one with our whole body gathered in your grace, the flesh of Christ, the flesh of creation, the body of your love. Amen. So Brody's going to share the word with us this morning from Acts chapter 1. Good morning. In my earlier account, dear Theophilus, I dealt with everything that Jesus had done and taught from the beginning until the day he was taken up after he had given instructions through the Holy Spirit to the apostles he had chosen. After the Passion, Jesus appeared alive to the apostles confirmed through many convincing proofs over the course of 40 days, and he spoke to them about the reign of God. On one occasion, Jesus told them not to leave Jerusalem. Wait, rather, for what God has promised, of which you have heard me speak. Jesus said, John baptized with water, but within a few days you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. While meeting together, they asked, <coughs> Has the time come, Rabbi? Are you going to restore sovereignty to Israel? Jesus replied, It is not for you to know times or dates that Abba God has decided. You will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, and then you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, throughout Judea, and Samaria, and even to the ends of the earth. Having said this, Jesus was lifted up in a cloud before their eyes and taken from their sight. They were still gazing up into the heavens when two messengers dressed in white stood beside them. You Galileans, why are you standing here looking up at the skies? They asked. Jesus, who has been taken from you, this same Jesus will return in the same way you watched him go into heaven. Reverend Lemmel. Reverend Hay. So good to see you. Morning. Hi. Hey. I confess I'm still missing our uh, our table. <laughs> I have something to lean on. Uh, so this is a this is a a kind of a strange story. Yes. Here in Acts chapter one, uh, for us modern folk. Uh, it's a little strange. I, I do a lot of scouring the internet for, for, for artwork and uh, to go along with, with what our, our readings are. And um, almost nobody is painting this scene anymore. But during medieval times, oh my gosh, it was super popular. And the, 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 the scene, it was almost stylized. The, this group of, group of uh, disciples looking up, and at the very top of the picture are a pair of feet with, with holes in them, uh, ju just the feet, and they're all, he's zooming, zooming skyward, and uh, modern artists and modern interpreters kind of go, what do we do with this funny, funny story? Because um, I don't think Jesus was on a heavenly escalator. Right. Yeah, I would say this is not in my top ten. <laughs> of Bible stories. Maybe not in my top 50. Um, but this year, when I read it, and, um, you know, imagine Jesus saying to the disciples, I'm going to go away, up somewhere, I'm going to go away, but it's okay, the Holy Spirit will come and be with you. It felt to me like you're not going to be able to see or touch or be with anyone you know or love for a year but it's okay, you have Zoom. <laughs> That's how it felt. And so no wonder the disciples were like, are you kidding me? This is no fun. I want you here. I want to be able to touch you. I want to be able to be with you. I think I get that in a way that I hadn't gotten that before. So it's really important to pay attention to what Jesus promises 
right. them. Uh, it's, it's better than Zoom. It's the Holy Spirit, <laughs> really. Uh, I want you to, I'm gonna, gonna read it straight from, from the scripture here. You will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. And then you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, throughout Judea and Samaria, and even to the ends of the earth. So Jesus is asking them, one, a promise of power right. that will witness in, at Pentecost. Which had to be cool and scary both. Yeah. Right? Yeah. It's like, it's like, yeah, <clears throat> like what's much that better about? than Zoom. Yeah. And, uh, and then you're going to be witnesses. Also cool and scary. So he says it starts, you're going to be witnesses first in Jerusalem. And I have this image of the disciples kind of bumping each other and going, okay. Jerusalem, I love Jerusalem. Ooh, That's great. They have terrific coffee shops in Jerusalem. <laughs> right? Awesome. And Jerusalem, he begins with, because it is the heart it is the heart of Judaism. It is, it is the central yeah. spiritual place. It's where the been, temple is. It, it's, it's, it's where it happens. That's they would the have center. been all over that. That would have been cool. Right. Uh, and then in Judea. And again, I think they would have said, great, there's parts of this country I haven't gotten to yet. I get to go home and I'll visit my in-laws while we're traveling around. Judea, all over Judea. So they're, they're feeling pretty good about yeah. the, these it's marching good. orders. And then he goes, and to Samaria, <laughs> where those are definitely not our people. And now I'm imagining a collective eye roll, right? Like, Oi, not oh, Samaria. Samaritans, that's right. Jesus yeah. loves Samaritans. All right, all right, all right, all right. We'll go to Samaria too. Grumble, 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 grumble. And then he says, to the ends of the earth, which I think was central Adirondacks. <laughs> Well, it's still okay. at the ends of the earth. And so, again, I can imagine them saying, wait, are, really? Like, I've never even been north of Galilee. And, like, Rome and Greece and Egypt, those are, those are big, scary places. I don't know. And I can imagine them still asking all these questions. And while they're kind of muttering among themselves, suddenly Jesus is taken up, right? And so they're just left with their impressions and their questions and their wondering, and now all they have to do is wait for the Holy Spirit. Yeah, they've, they've, they've got a Jesus-shaped hole in their lives now. Right. And, and, and a promise for something is going to be happening here. And we wait. And once again, it's a thing that I think they don't know because they haven't done it yet. Uh, Benjamin Duholm, who's a pastor at Christ Lutheran Church in uh, Dallas, he writes that when Jesus was removed from the local presence in the sight of his friends, that's precisely what allows him to be in all things and be present to the whole creation and to the whole people for their preaching to be made known. He's still here but in a new way. And I think that makes sense to us because that's the only way we've known Jesus is being in everything. But for them, I think that took getting used to. That was weird. In the hymn we sung by Brian Wren at the beginning, Christ is alive no longer bound to distant years in Palestine. Right. The ascension meant that he was no longer bound by time and space, but is now able to be everywhere anywhere, anytime, beyond time, beyond space, beyond the bounds of human imagination, and is able to be present everywhere. And that is the, uh, it's a hard concept. But uh, it's also, it's the core of our faith. It's the core of our 2, faith 2,000 years later. Yeah. That in the ascension, don't get stuck on the elevator <laughs> imagery. Don't get stuck on an elevator. Never get stuck on an anywhere. elevator. There's too many bad movies with that as a major plot point, uh, that where Jesus, the local rabbi from Nazareth, is now the very presence of life and love that permeates the universe. And our calling, after the ascension, is to be recognizing that presence 
everywhere we look. Fully present, seeing Jesus Christ fully present in our world today, in all, in all the places we look. In Jerusalem, meaning in our own hearts, in Judea, among the people we know and love, in Samaria, the people we don't know or frankly aren't sure we want to and might need a lot of Holy Spirit help to love, and even to the ends of the earth, meaning loving everyone or recognizing the Christ in everyone. And for a lot of folk, that's hard to do. Including I can think us. of any number of people who have a hard time seeing that in me. Uh, it's a difficult exercise for all of us. And so as we're on the cusp of this time of coming out of COVID, it's, gonna be, it's still going to be bumpy. It's still like we're trying to figure it out as we go. Some of us are here without masks, which is an amazing thing. The one, of the one of you that I spoke with this morning said, maybe this week, I don't know about next week, right? So it's still, we're still figuring it out. Mm -hmm. um, but life is getting, is opening back up again, right? Um, and so this story makes us think about how is it we want to come out of COVID? How do we want to choose to be as post-COVID people who also are followers of Jesus? How do we want to make choices as we live into whatever the next thing is for us as a culture and as a church. So our calling, again, is to come out of COVID not shrunk down like we've been, right. but to open up and seeking to recognize and witness Jesus in ourselves, in our friends, in our enemies, in people far away, everyone, in Jerusalem, in Judea, in Samaria, and to the ends of the earth, in ourselves, in our families, in our faith community, in Essex, and Winooski, and Westford, and Walden, and Fairfax, and Burlington, and Brooklyn, and Burundi, and Bangladesh, everywhere. So this last week, I was listening to VPR on my way to an appointment in the car, and there was an interview with, the, with John Dillon, who is retiring after 20 years as a VPR reporter. He was the first person who was hired full-time to be a reporter for VPR, Vermont Public Radio. Um, and it caught my ear because I used to go to parties with John Dillon <laughs> we're, a long we're old time ago. To remember right? that. Back What's before it? he was at Vermont Public Radio. I've been fly fishing with John Dillon, right? So I was like, and every time I hear him on the radio, I'm like, oh, John, how's it we going? We have to get back together again one of these yeah, days. That's it right. never does. And um, he's an immensely wise and thoughtful person. He had 20 years in print journalism before he worked for Vermont Public Radio. And as they were interviewing him, one of the questions they asked was, John, what do you wish more people understood about Vermont? And he said, I'm going to turn that question around on you and tell you what I wish Vermonters understood about Vermont. And then he went on in his gentle and also really solid way to say, and I'm, I'm paraphrasing here, Vermont is wonderful and it's not the paradise that it's made out to be. There are real issues here. And he spoke about Lake Champlain. He spoke about energy issues here. He spoke about diversity issues, race issues, wealth disparity, affordable housing crises, any number of things. He didn't beat people over the head with it. Mm -hmm. He just kind of laid out this list. And he said, I want Vermonters to realize that there's some things that are really wonderful about Vermont. And Vermont is a place like any other place. Mm -hmm. And that caught my ear because we had been talking about what does it mean to witness in Jerusalem and Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. So the, I guess the lesson we got from it was that hearing John Dillon and reflecting on Jesus' words this week uh, and reflecting on Jesus' call to witness both to Judea, the people we know and love, 
and to Samaria made me realize that, that Samaria is not just people who live somewhere else. Right. Samaria's right here. Mm -hmm. And everyone's got their own pet Samaritans. <laughs> Do you have, you have to get a license for that? That's right, we keep them in a small box <laughs> in the basement. <laughs> The, so the calling of Essex Center United Methodist Church is to be Jesus' witnesses right here, to look for Jesus and to find Jesus right here in the real beauty of Vermont, but also in the real brokenness of Vermont. We get to work for God's kingdom, God's realm, right here and right now. Now, you guys have experience with this. You've been looking and witnessing for Jesus with Mary Waters for a decade, with Greg Smith for a decade, with me for more than a decade, sorry. And now with Joel Hubbard for the days to come. And you have been able to find the best. You've been able to find the Christ in each of us. Work around the parts that weren't so much. And work with those pastoral leaders to go out into the world and find Christ out there, to witness to Christ, to witness to the kingdom, and to work toward the peace and the justice and the love and the compassion and the mercy that are the hallmarks of the kingdom that Jesus came to proclaim. And it's our theory that doing this is going to require learning on our part, but not necessarily book learning. And we recalled the words of a colleague of ours, Cameron, Cameron Trimble, who said she was getting ready to take some academic classes. And she said, you know, I don't feel like I need more learning unless it's going to help me become wise and present and kind. And she actually said to the professors, do you have any classes here that will make me wise and present and kind? Those are the kind of classes I want to take. And it feels to us that that's how we can be witnesses by being wise and present and kind in ourselves, in the folks we love, in the folks we don't know yet, to the ends of the earth. That that's how we are Jesus people after his ascension. So once again, I think as we're coming out of COVID, we need, as we reflect on Acts chapter one, is once again, we can't get stuck on the elevator. When the disciples, we see the disciples and they're uh, looking up. We don't know how long. We've joked in sermons before about you know the drool coming down, dropping on their sandals. And then these two messengers come up and what do they say? Dudes. The actual Greek is dudes. I think it's translated, you Galileans. What are you doing looking up into the sky? Jesus said, get to Jerusalem, man. You guys have a job to do. You have work to do. We can't be staring into the sky, wishing that things would go back to the way they used to be pre-COVID. We aren't going back. There will be no pre-COVID. We pray, we pray there will be a post-COVID, but it will be different. And I think it can be better. We who are people of faith can come out of COVID committed anew to looking for Jesus in every one and everything we encounter. Committed to being wise and present and kind to ourselves, to those we know and love, to those we don't know, who we might consider enemies, and even to the ends of the earth. 
We have a calling post-COVID to and, be witnesses. And we don't have to do it alone. We do it together as a community, and we do it together with the Holy Spirit. Jesus is in each of us. We have a last hymn, a good Charles Wesley tune, well, Charles Wesley words, somebody else's tune called Christ from whom all blessings flow is number 550 in your hymnal and it'll be on slides on the live stream. Thank you, Catherine. As we get ready for our prayers of the people, uh, we ask that uh, folk uh, at home can share their prayers of joy and concern uh, on the comment section of the Facebook page. Please put those in, and Barb can hopefully read those in the sunshine, and we'll lift those up at the end of the prayer. Thanks to those of you that have been holding up with the kind of wonky um, Internet stuff tonight, but, uh, today, but I think we're good. Charles Wesley's song, um, I haven't sung it in a few years, and it's amazing lyrics. It sounds like it could have been written last year uh, about all distinctions, all human distinctions, rendered void by love and all of us being tempered by God's art. We are works of art brothers and sisters, lovingly created, knit together, human creations and all of creation, and our calling to discover God's presence, Christ's reality in all of it. Um, I hope I can keep Mr. Wesley's uh, lyrics in my head all through this week. I'm going to lift up a prayer, a prayer song from Ghana. As our prayer for the week. And I especially lift up in prayer brothers and sisters from Ghana uh, who have been such uh, gifts for me here in Vermont. Uh, appreciate their presence and their love and their faith. 
Let us pray. Journeying God, pitch your tent with ours so that we may not become deterred by hardship, strangeness, doubt. Show us the movement we must make toward a wealth not dependent on possessions, toward a wisdom not based on books, toward a strength not bolstered by might, toward a God not confined to heaven. Help us to find ourselves as we walk in each other's shoes. Amen. And as we share each other's journey, we lift up prayers. Would you lift up prayers here out loud? Who would you have us lift up in prayer today? Donna? This is Clint's wife, so she's also dealing with that loss. So Joyce Holmes. Holmes, thank you. Oh, yes, sir. For my mom and my dad and all of my family. Prayers for your mom and your dad and your whole family? Yeah. That's a great prayer. Thank you. For Nancy Bell. Oh, thank you, Sally. Mm. Thank you, Sally. Marjorie. She had two New Hampshire's and her oldest daughter. But she hasn't seen her for years. Okay, I'm so glad you were able to make those connections with your daughter. That's so wonderful. After. A year and a half. Thank you. I want to lift up my friend Kate. We um, held her family in prayer when her mother suffered a stroke a couple months ago. And her mom passed away this last week, not suddenly, but sooner than folks expected. And the funeral is tomorrow. Um, and also, again, um, my colleague's seven-year-old granddaughter, Sophie, who's struggling with leukemia. I would lift up our family and Joel and Grace and all the pastors who are needing to make tearful changes and moves and saying goodbye to people they love and saying hello to the unknown. Um, a lot like what the disciples dealt with 2,000 years ago. Pat would like us to lift up prayers of comfort for the Steve Hayes family and friends who passed away yesterday. <clears throat> we also lift up the people of Gaza who are dealing with such destruction at the hands of the mighty. We pray for the people of Israel that they may know peace and recognize injustice. Marilyn asks um, or echoes that prayer for peace in the Mideast and also prayers of comfort for the family of a dear friend, Vern McSadzian. We lift up all these prayers, those we've shared and written, 
and those we hold in our hearts. And we lift them up, remembering the prayer that Jesus taught his disciples so long ago. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Thank you, Barb. We have some announcements to let you all know about. We have uh, birthdays this week for Chris Fleury on the 17th, on the 18th for Melissa Norton, and for Nancy Nye, happy birthday, Nancy, and for Jody Heffernan. And on the 20th, June, where's June? And Sandy are having an anniversary. Which one? 43. 43. They were, they were 16 when they got married. And it was, yeah, yeah, 15, 15. You can take a look at uh, the calendar events coming up. We have a uh, Bible study on Monday, uh, Wednesday, Teze. Uh, I'm continuing uh, doing our Pastor Mitch meetups uh, in the coming weeks on the 20th and the 22nd. Uh, there are multiple times, so go to the Doodle Poll uh, online and sign up for one of those. Uh, next Sunday, we are going to have in-person worship indoors, and uh, so invite you all to be a part of that. Uh, the re-entry team has uh, recommended that uh, because we want to be an inviting and open place for the most vulnerable among us, especially uh, children who cannot be vaccinated, that we will all wear masks uh, during the worship services. And uh, that way we can be as inviting and as caring uh, for the most vulnerable among us. Uh, but we will be meeting on the 23rd. Uh, uh, we have a baptism scheduled again. Where that's going to be, uh, we're still in conversation with that. So we'll figure out whether some might be here, some might be uh, at Browns River, and we'll let you know uh, as we get closer. Uh, also next Sunday, uh, Christine is uh, inviting folks to go biking with her. And this is important. Uh, Marilyn Almeida is uh, in charge of collecting your welcome pages uh, to welcome uh, Joel and Grace to be the new pastors here, uh, little autobiographical uh, pages so we can make an album. Uh, when you all did that for Barb and me, it was so helpful uh, to be able to get a feel for who folk were uh, and even more so now as uh, we're still in the midst of COVID. It'll be really wonderful uh, for them to have that album. So uh, get, that, get those to uh, Marilyn. The deadline is the 31st. And then on June 13th, a few weeks from now, we'll have a, uh, a goodbye shindig at the uh, Sand Hill Park. And uh, everyone's invited. Any other announcements? Yes, ma'am.
part of Wow Wishes and Love for Mitch and Barb. Uh, cake, beverages, and ice cream will be provided. Please bring your lunch, a mask, and a chair if you'd like, and all are welcome. Oh, bring a Frisbee, too. Yeah, cool. <laughs> yes? Yes, and so for the next four weeks, uh, we are going to be indoors, and as I as shared earlier, we're, we're going to be uh, masked and indoors, uh, and then on, uh, and that will be through the 13th of June, which will be uh, our last Sunday, and then uh, Don and Donna will be uh, preaching, and then on June, I'm sorry, July 4th, uh, uh, Joel will be preaching that Sunday. And we'll still be wearing masks. Correct. And there will be no singing indoors because of that. Yep. And again, CDC can change what they're saying any day. So we'll just go with those guidelines as best we can. Our benediction comes from Joyce Rupp. I invite you to stand. If you're at home and you're in bed, just don't spill your coffee. Disturbing God. That's not a title I use very often. Disturbing God. Wake us up to what needs doing and what needs undoing. Wake us up to what must be let go and to what to draw closer. Wake us up to what enlarges love and what diminishes it. In all parts of our life, disturb us and wake us up and send us out to Jerusalem in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth in the name of the God who is creator and redeemer and sustainer now and forever. Amen. y'all. <laughs> Thank you, June.